Third choice, one. Ah, I can feel the power of the Diva Loka's representative filling me, like an empty vessel under a waterfall. As they take on the rule that Shiva once refused, Mahakala becomes the bearer of Shiva's rule as well. Now a shadow with substance, Mahakala shrouds the entire city in their dark embrace and slowly begins to devour it. It is as if the underworld and the real world have switched places. For the streets, once filled with living, breathing people, are now roamed instead by the shadows of the departed. <sighs> what is the meaning of this? I can't move! The all-consuming darkness, blacker than night, continues to swallow Kabukicho block by block. It clings to Tanatoma like Tar, rubbing the counselor of sight and movement in heartbeat. They were experiencing the memory of those who once died in this Tokyo. Ah, wonderful. This darkness like sinking into warm baths. Praise Mahakala! <laughs> yes, in fact, praise me! After all, I am to inherit the very same role as the Great Black One possesses. Daikaku laughs uproariously. It seems he alone is able to travel freely within the clinging darkness. Yet there is clearly more to it than that. Not only is he moving, but he is manipulating the darkness around him, as if it were an extension of his own body. One could almost believe that he and the darkness are cut from the same cloth, or more precisely, the same being. So that's who you real are. You and the Great Shadow are one and the same. Oh dear. It would appear you have learned too much. I'm afraid we will have to part ways here. The fewer who know that I meddled in the affairs of the world representatives, the better. Don't worry. I'm sure your superiors won't mind it if you take a little time off. So just sit back. And let my darkness consume you. <laughs> let this be retribution for all those days I suffered in the underworld without a sun to warm me and only the shadows of the dead for company. Now, at long last, I have power to rival Amaterasu. My forces roam the world above, and so do I. <laughs> So you don't have the guts to walk around with a bunch of followers at your back. Look at this be. Who goes there? Spinning around to face the direction the voices came from, Daikaku sends a wave of shadow soldiers into the darkness ahead of him. However... Impressive. Who is it that can make such quick work of my shadows? At least still here. Mmm, evening. Guess I must have had struck a nerve there, huh? My bad. You, dumb bitch girl. I had you welcome, uninvited guest. If I may ask one question. How are you able to move so freely through the darkness? It's obvious, isn't it? I'm a vampire. The night is my domain, and I can become anything that shares that affinity. Bats, mist. Even darkness. I'm Ellie, a woman who can walk alone through the darkness of Kabukicho without fear. You'll want to remember that. Meanwhile, in Ikebukuro, a similar dark shadow is trying to swallow you and your friends. However, an unexpected ally arrives just in time to save you. I'm brighter than the sun! No, a whole galaxy! Ah!
Uchi Moyas! Mm. Right. I can move on my own again. The shadow's gone. The fire she sent her way. Quick, over here. The shadow's already coming back. Hey, aren't you the one who helped me in Kabuki Guess I owe you double now, huh? You tra you're a transient savior sweeps through the masses of shadows, crowding the streets, sending them flying left, right, and center. Bro, he's taking them all on alone. Talk about a one-man army. Don't say that! You'll make me feel lonely! <laughs> There's some things you just can't tell, person! Unless you want me to roast you alive! Is that what you want? Is that- is it? What? No, 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 please. I didn't mean like that. Really? Well, good. Mm -hmm. Right now, that, that's subtle. It's time to get back to business. Kutsuga of the Berserkers is here to turn this fight on its head. I'm basically one of those cheat code unlockable characters. Like, take a car versus a bunch of poor villagers. Okay, so you're from the Berserkers. Kutsuga? I've never heard of you before, but dang, you're strong. Yeah, crazy strong. You're cool out there. I think I'm really going to like you. Okay, come on, there's no reason to get worked up. It, it, it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> Guess you two must be on the good guy's team. Kengo and Arthur, was it? If we want, we could be friends. <laughs> What's up? <that like? laughs> Why is this that newcomer can move? The shadows ought to shroud all the touch and darkness. If this transient's fire being repels him, how can this be? Ktsuga is a transient from the world of the old ones. The flames that cover his body are ruled by the belief that they will burn until they meet the horizon. As such, a rule from Shangri-La, the world of the Lost Horizon, cannot hope to counteract his abilities. Incredible! Is he really a member of the Berserkers? You certainly are a sneaky one, Snow, keeping such a powerful ally in your back pocket for so long. Hmm, yes, well, Kusuga, you see, is the Berserker's secret weapon. Actually, I suppose I should say he is the weapon we would have liked to keep secret for longer. <laughs> what? But... It's just, there were reasons why I could not allow him to participate in matches in the Coliseum, and even now, I'm not sure he should be. Well, sh shall I tell you about the time Kisuga first came to the Ikebuka Coliseum? Yeah, it should be good. Whoa! This place is packed! Guess this underground coliseum I've been hearing about must be pretty popular. One thing's for sure, this place is nothing like my home star. For my heart. Mm, not that uh, I'm some kind of country bumpkin. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, this seems like the part of the story where my legend begins. I just have to win my way to the top, earn my weight in coin, maybe find a few admirers along the way. Of course, and when I do, that's where I'll say the line, I have no need for admirers. I only came here be to become stronger. Dang, that's so cool. Oh, I bet I'll have as many friends as there are stars in the sky. I just know I am. Okay. Gotta make sure I have my signature phrase down pet. Uh, what was it again? I know I wrote it down here somewhere. Uh -huh. And tone my name thrice upon dawn's horizon, and I, Kasuga, the loving flame, shall charge to your side. Uh, that's the one. Heck yeah! Whoops. Time flies when you're on logging. I better get my butt to the arena, because it's time for my debut. So, that is our promising new candidate, we take it. Master Claude, what a lovely surprise. I didn't think I'd be seeing you at this unranked battle. To answer your question, yes, he's the one. 
It would appear he is even more powerful than I had originally anticipated. He's talented, I'll give him that. What's his name? He fights like a rage fire. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, he's definitely strong. He's strong enough that he reminds me of a certain someone. Eh, he's not quite my type. Looks like we got ourselves a new star. We better start organizing photo shoots and meet and greets ASAP. I don't want to keep the fans waiting. Uh, he's alive, new one. I have I got a shot at him because my belly's rolling just looking at him. <laughs> All eyes in the arena from spectators, competitors are alike, are all fixed on Kasuka. Uh, everyone's looking at me! I think that crowd over there must be my opponents. As in, the future friends who respect by beating them to a pulp. Uh, that's how it always goes, right? Now, I'm getting nervous. Oh no. <laughs> now I'm panicking. Ah! Ah! Mm -hmm. What's got into him? He is acting rather strange. He was doing so well, too. Ha! <laughs> You're wide open. No! Stop! Don't get too close! Uh, I mean it! No! What in the world? Master Claude, behind me now, if you please. Yeah! <laughs> Oh. Indeed, we're like a superstar back there. Or should I say, a supernova. At least, that explosion certainly resembled one. Well, let's just say, we're lucky that app resets everything, or the underground Coliseum would be a wasteland right now. Now, what am I going to do with you? Kasuga. I can't. Oh, yeah. I can't. How goes my ultimate legend? My hundreds of friends. My clothes and wires. Stone lets out a heavy sigh as he watches Kasuga hug his knees and sob pitifully in the corner of his office. In order to maintain balance between all of your incredible physical attributes, you really must work on your. How should I put this? Don't tell me I have a weeping tally! You don't know me! <laughs> I wouldn't have gone that far, but... Look, if you keep going like this, we won't be able to send you out in front of the crowd again. Oh, hold on! Please, don't kick me out just like everyone else! This guild is my last hope! Uh, I thought I'd finally found somewhere where nobody knows me! Or I could have a fresh start! Uh, I don't want to be alone anymore! Well, what do you think, Master Claude? I'll leave the decision in your capable hands. Well, Kasuga, are we pronouncing that correctly? A question for you. What is it you see from battle? Friends, companions, any form of company I can get. I just don't want to be alone anymore. And is that something you are willing to fight for, regardless of how strong your opponent might be? <clears throat> Well, yeah. I mean, all I have is my strength. You see, that's a good answer, Kasuga. Huh? You shine brightest when all eyes are upon you in the middle of the ring like a circus. You are one who loses all control in the frenzy of battle. You recognize your own loneliness and understand your own desires. It is our belief that such a person is deserving of our love and a place in this theater we call the Coliseum. Master Claude, are you trying to say what I think you're saying? We are, Kasuga. From this moment forth, you are one of us, a member of the Berserkers. Uh, uh, four years? Wow! Uh, thanks, boss. I'm over the moon right now. I'm so happy I could just explode. Oh, uh, whoops. Oh dear. <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> Even our next team is speechless. <laughs> that is how we beat be my secret weapon. However, circumstances being what they are, he was our best choice for this mission. A question, Snow. What do you mean by that last statement? Well, Kosuga is very focused on his state of loneliness. It is his nature to ch charge single-mindedly towards what he wants. Now, we know that the Shiva is a very powerful being, Mahakala even more so. To make matters worse, the two of them have now been combined. They are, to all outward appearances, a unified being. However, is that really the case? Are Shiva and Mahakala actually focused in the same direction? Do they truly want the same thing? Hello, Kasuga. Can you hear me? Don't forget, you need to send Kengo and Aerith in my way. Sure, just leave it to me. Hey, you two, time to get your butts back into base. Huh? Wait. <laughs> he just he just yeeted us out of there. Wait, what? Did we just teleport? I guess he has old ones uh, teleportation powers too. Oh, welcome back. I'm so glad to see you in one piece. Oh, I left on my tailbone. Hey, Shiro, mind telling us what the heck's going on here? We're back in race under Ikebukuro, but how's that possible? Do you really need to ask? I'm sure you know about the old one's powers, Arthur. I guess all old ones have the te power teleportation. Oh, you mean he teleported us here? Like how Sog went there, all can. Very good. Now there is no time to waste. We must prepare all we can while Kasuga and the others buy us time. You mean Kasuga isn't alone? Others? What others? Well, I just keep on coming. Huh? Who's. <laughs> Mad Tiger! Hello! Long time no see! Hope you saved some meat for us! Makan! I can't believe it! You're all here! Did you come tell me? I'm so happy I could cry! <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Whoa! What was that? Did a volcano go off or something? We're not. This is all part of the plan. That explosion just means that we've been given a bit more time. So, our shadow soldiers have been erased. Massive explosion caused by Kasuga scoured the surface of the Ikebukuro, wiping out every last shadow in its path. Of course, the rest of the Ikebukuro, uh, of course, the rest of the Ikebukuro was no less vulnerable to the flames and suffered a similar fate. Now Shiva Mahakala hovers above the raised remains of the city, whispering to themselves as they stare down at the only things that yet remain standing: Kasuga and his eyes. But it matters not. Our shadows are infinite in number, after all. I can regenerate and fight on endlessly. Thus, you will never reach us. The verdict of this battle was decided long before it had begun, and it's not changed now. You cannot hope to. Such power. The opponent I should be fighting is down there. <laughs> what? Where are you going, Shiva? Stop! Looks like Shiva took the bait. Mahakala, you are the ruler of all who have passed. But uh, you would never deign to stand on front lines yourself. And why should you? With an unlimited number of soldiers at your disposal, you need only sit back and watch the battle play out. If you do that, there's no way you can lose. But what about Shiva? Exactly. Shiva's the key to this situation. And Ryo can told you to do some digging. And I found out that Shiva was once a transient who sought, above all else, to do battle with the strong. The question is, will Shiva be able to sit idly by when her strongest warrior is in sight? Shiva Mahakala is certainly worthy of the title Ultimate Weapon. 
a perfect trump card, if I ever saw one. Especially with the powers of Deva Loka's representative to command. However, Mahakala and Shiva are not one and the same. Mahakala is a ruler, while Shiva is a monk who seeks to train. That difference in priorities is something we fully intend to exploit. Now, I'd say we're about ready to begin things on our end. I hope we didn't keep you waiting long. I'm ready when you are, Kengo. Arthur. As am I. It is time to unveil the Wiseman's long-held research at last. Are you talking about... <laughs> you know what they say, an eye for an eye. Using the same logic, you could say an exception for an exception. What? Are we summoning Thor? And the warmongers have created the perfect environment for that to take place. This situation is too good not to take advantage of, but strategies tend to end up resembling one another when subject to similar conditions. And since this is all based on a plan my brother devised, the child prodigy on the other side is bound to have a similar plan in mind too. I see. So we are something, Thor. The shadow. Could it be? Hey, look. He doesn't have crazy eyes anymore. Just like his uh, AR. My homeland is a remote other world, far from this Tokyo, the world of the old ones. As the living flame, my home was on a full mile halt, a stark distance even at light speed that burns alone in the vast expanse of space. Flares often range across its surface, and it is brighter and hotter than the sun. I doubt anyone else could survive in starlight -like full halt unless their body is made of flames too. But. If there are others like me, I guess they must be pretty lonely. I bet that's what you are thinking, wasn't it? Ah, don't be so mean. <clears throat> anyway, where was I? All right, loneliness. While I'm back on my home star, I would slice off a piece of myself at a time and use it to create minions to keep me company. In case you haven't gotten a message right now, I'm Kazuga, and those flares that rage across formal heart are on me. Sometimes I explode and send everything in the vicinity flying. That's just how I was born. All I know how to do is burn and glow white hot. I've got no other chance to speak of. If I stayed on that star, I would have nothing more to do for the rest of my days than stare at the other stars and cosmos around me. I would never have had the chance to find someone who sees me for who I am. But back then, I didn't even know the meaning of the word loneliness, and if I hadn't left, I probably still wouldn't. So, I'm really, truly grateful to be here. I want to thank whoever it was who brought me to this Tokyo. Whatever your reasons were for giving me this opportunity, thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Uh, huh? Hey, how long are you planning to hide behind me anyway? Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! I did it again! Not everyone's gone! Hey, newcomer, do you have any idea? Uh, how flipping cool that was! Dang, you're so strong! <laughs> Kazuga, you're like a star. Like, literally glowing. I'm so glad you're part of the Berserkers. You just leave the promotion to old Anvari. I'll sell you to the crowd. These days, people really dig the whole mysterious warrior vibe. With that modest getup, <laughs> you'll scratch the itch. We'll have to skip in the in-person photo ops and conventions. But uh, we can sell promotional calendars. Next time I see Garmin and Ikotoshi, I'm going to tell them about this. <clears throat> you really mean it. I'm one of you now. I'm so happy. Huh? And who are you? Without a doubt, you are strong. 
I would like to challenge you to a test of strength. My name is Shiva. I'm a monk who forsook love to pursue the limits of strength. Oh, is this the part where I introduce my whole deal? Or did I miss it? Dang, I've got to learn to be a better protagonist. <clears throat> my name is Kasuga. I fight to make my friends and build a fan base. I'll cheer my name. I see. Those are incredibly foolish choices for one so strong. Why would you abandon your aloofness to willingly participate in the cycle of karmic suffering? To one such as you, the least I can do is grant the mercy of a swift and complete death. I suppose I'll just have to trust Shiva. Mahakala mutters to himself as they contemplate Kutuga from a distance. Mahakala's rule and rule govern the darkness that enshrouds the underworld, the realm of the lost horizon. Their salvation is an end to all things. Like a black hole, they would swallow all creation and reduce it to nothingness. However, while they can easily devour whole suns, Kasuga is beyond their power of destruction. Oh, really? Or at least, Mahakala has no idea what would happen if they did attempt to distinguish this newcomer with their dark powers. This makes him distinctly uncomfortable. However, even if they can't use their great darkness directly, there are other ways. Yes, I must exploit this fire being weakness instead. Rise, my shadows. You know what you have to do. What the? Oh, come on. That's just a plain unfair. Another shadow army? Ugh, I'm sick to death of fighting these guys. How can I satiate my appetite if all you do is send small fries my way? Oh, yeah. That looks nice. Now that's what I'm talking about. Finally, something I can sink my teeth into. Hey, big lug. Hope you're hungry, because it's eat or be eaten. My word. Mushusu's face. From his place in the sky, astride his dragon companion Mushusu, Marduk surveys the hellish cityscape of Ikebukuro. It is now crawling with eerie shadows, and it seems that touching one of these, even for a moment, is enough to secure one's doom. People are being swallowed by the darkness. Mm, that's horrendous. Of course, I'm not afraid. Mm, not at all. Marduk trembles from head to toe as he analyzes the situation from the perspective of a hero. Oh, what has become of the order of this world? How can it be that he and his companions have disappeared from his sight? And what am I supposed to do here? Having only just come to, Marduk struggles to comprehend the events that are unfolding in Tokyo. Hmm. Marduk's role is to pursue Tiamat, the manifold dragon. To him, this is no mere impulse. It is a concrete instinct ingrained in him from the moment of his birth. He recalls the moment he was chasing him, his target, without warning, until he suddenly disappeared like smoke. This bewilders Marduk, who knows nothing of the teleportation abilities of the Old Ones. For while he retains knowledge pertaining to the world around him, he is unable to hold on to anything subjective, including his own ideas. I do not understand what is the right course of action here for a hero like me. What in the? Do my eyes deceive me, or is that boy truly running perpendicular to the wall of that building? Hey, Marduk! Good timing! Can you give me a lift on Mashusu? Without waiting for an answer, the boy extends a beam of light in place of his hand. It shoots forth and grips Marduk's arm, which the boy then uses as leverage to hoist himself onto Mashusu's back. What? How did you... Ah, thanks for that. Those sticky dark things are sure are persistent. No matter how many times I shot them down, they just kept coming. Who are you, child? How is it you know me? Oh, did you get reborn again? Well, don't worry about it. It's not like this is the first time. 
<laughs> Marduk sputters as boy thumps him on the back with surprising strength for his agent stature. Oops! Sorry, did I hit you too hard? Sometimes I don't know my own strength. <laughs> anyway, this doesn't the situation just make you furious? Or do they get to be the ones having all the fun? You know, I think it must be fate that we met here like this. What do you say we work together to show him who's the boss? Alright, so, uh, Tito's finally having a role now. Oh, um, alright. Perhaps it's his a winsome smile, but despite having no memory of this boy, Marduk finds himself agreeing to his request. Well, they both are sun gods. Each of the world representatives harbors their own personal feelings towards the one we call the prize of this game. In other words, the three true guilds are not united at all. Of course, we warmongers are no exception. We are a collection of world representatives who share desires to continue the fight of the aforementioned prize. In fact, it is our wish to fight the prize ahead of anyone else. Naturally, that has made us prone to rush course of action and getting in one another's way. After all, we share the same target. The Banished One, the Exile. Of course, depending on how you look at things, banished might not be the right word. He can be said to have merely eluded punishment. Thus, it is only natural that... Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down a bit, Mephistopheles. I'm going skipping over the part. I snuck all the way down here to find out about. Hmm. See, when I heard you were the world representative, Gehenna, I kind of did a double take. I mean... I've heard my fair share of rumors. I know that everyone who calls themselves a world rep in Red Hokio is someone who once banished one of the 23 people whose memories reside inside Arthen. Obviously, one of those people has to be someone from Gehenna, and we both know who that is. So, there should be a Shaitan, maybe. But, I also happen to know that you never banished him. So, what's the deal? Am I not me in on the secret? Ah, oh, come on, we're pals, aren't we? We're both from Gehenna. Very well, Bathim. We were his second closest advisor, after all. Our master and ruler of Gehenna, Lucifer. The people of Eden know him as Shaitan, the Angel of Flame. I had the honor of acting in our master's stead, a role I was very grateful to undertake. You were completely correct when he stated that I never banished him. However, my position with the warmongers here, in this Tokyo, is an exceptionally complicated one. Oh. Do you tell? Well, there is another individual whose memories reside with the, in the prize. One with whom I share. A connection. One who eluded me and then ascended to the heavens. A, whom, a human I served as a faithful butler in order to acquire his soul. With this, the transient who calls himself Mephistopheles removes his mask with a flick of his wrist and a grin. So, you see, there are two of me here in this Tokyo, the one you see before you, and another who shares my form. Another who shares his form? Is he talking about the Salmon? I don't know. Meanwhile, after having been teleported beneath the streets of Ikabuguro, you now find yourself under Snow's care as he tends to your wounds. I think that should suffice. Can you stand, Erthen? If yeah, your medicine works wonders. I think I can fight too. Good. Shiro is helping Kingo prepare as we speak. We will be able to proceed with the next phase of the plan very shortly. I've gotta go help Kasuga. No, no. There is no rush. Before you go, there is something I would like to tell you. But first, let me ask you this. Do you recall our first meeting, Arthur? Well, we had a battle. We did. And you are unable to counter one way attacks in time. Whereupon that dedicated butler of yours, who never leaves your side, leaves in the way to protect you. Didn't you, Solomon? Uh, of course I did! And let me tell you, it hurt like crazy! What do you put in those lightning bolts of yours? I really must apologize. It was my own inexperience that failed to stay my hand that day. Huh? You can see little Solomon. I did kind of suspect you could see him. 
Indeed. Well, I believe he is invisible to most others. My role and rule allow me to see, hear, and interact with them. Ah, oh my! This is heavenly! You could pass the legendary petting exam with my honors! Mm. Wait a sec. You pet him that day too. I was being protected? The copies I can make of myself are the same sort of being as your friend Solomon. That is, they are side in the same dimension. Considering that, do you not think it possible that within Solomon, as within you, there might reside another's or several others' memories? You think Lel Salmon is living with other people's memories? Come now. Surely that would not be so surprising. It is certainly nothing to be afraid of, and would it not be comforting to know that you are kindred spirits? After all, it simply boils down to the fact that you are not alone. You possess the memories of 23 different exiles. You never asked for it, yet you're stuck with it all the same. I'm sure there are those who would contrive meaning from that. Yes, I believe many would pity your misfortune at being lumped with a burden you never asked for. However, you are not alone in your fate. Solomon, Master Claude, even I share similar circumstances. In fact, you could say that everyone in this world is forced to perform some rule they, that has been given to them. Someone decides the makeup of our body and mind, what we are capable of, what we desire, and we have to live with their design. However, if nothing else, please remember this. Regardless of how others define you and the world in which you live, you always have the right to decide for yourself what those things mean to you. Misfortune or opportunity, friend or ally, such distinctions are yours to make. Only you can truly define your inner world and self. And I believe that it is up to us, as individuals, to interpret the world around us as well. So long as you keep the simple truth in mind, you will easily eclipse the person I was the day we first met. No, I think that's quite enough for me. Good luck out there, Arthur. When the battle is done, I shall prepare you a warm pot of milk tea to soothe your aches. With that, Snow sweeps a graceful bow and directs you to the hidden staircase that leads above ground. Hey, partner! I'm ready to kick some certain shadows, but how about you? Kango thrusts his fist towards you with a grin. <laughs> what are these options? Third choice three. This is a tall map featuring a boss or multiple clones of a boss. I'm not sure what we're up against. It might be a survival initial mission or it might be a what's it called just a, a defeat old boss. We'll just have to find out. Mind if I ask you a question, Mephistopheles? Why do you bring me all the way here? Why, isn't it obvious? I wanted you to p be party to this particular conversation. You have been selected as a replacement for a broken part. I thought it only prudent that you'd be informed of the reasons behind that decision. Nothing more, nothing less. Although, I suspect that you're already aware of them. Am I correct, Duo? Hey, hey, hey! I've been looking for you! It's almost time, so I'm here to call on you, Duo. What do you mean by that, Bertram? I'm talking about the last phase of Operation Mahakala. The show's about to begin, and we've got front row seats. As our reserve, I figure you deserve to see the final stage in all its glory. Front row seats? You mean... Yep. I'm talking about Ikebukuro, wall and all. Come on, come on! Let's go see the ultimate weapon completed. <laughs> What's the point of knocking them all down if you just keep getting back up? 
We'll be here forever at this rate. We gotta do something about that humongous one over. Huh? Oi, I'm back! And I've got company. Ready to roll, Thor. Sure am. Let's do this, Kengo. <laughs> oh, wow, so it's actually sentient. Uh, well, I guess I yoked sauce was too, but... Damn. All right, here we go! <laughs> Following Kengo's lead, Sora sends Mahakal flying with a powerful swing of his fists. <laughs> Looks like it really doesn't like, take an exception to beat up another exception. No, that strike only landed because Shiva's left me, the fool. Wait, where are you going? Are you even listening to me? Remember all the trouble you gave us earlier? Well, it's time for me to pay you back in full. Excellent! It would appear that they are holding up well against Mahakala. Indeed! My brother's plan is working out far better than I could have hoped. Having an exception like Sora fight the spell is ingenious. I'm honestly surprised the warmongers had the same idea. Well, I suppose geniuses are so sometimes struck by the same inspiration. Or perhaps it's simply because Duo is the reserve. These are the results of the experiments Duo and Shuichi conducted in Ikabuko, now utilized to their full potential. The idea was to draw out a sacred artifacts rule by having Kenko take on Thor's memories. Hmm. However, the reaction caused by transplanting foreign memories was greater than we had anticipated. Not that you'd know that, looking at Kenko now. Perhaps it's because their personalities are already very similar, or... Roritaka Shiro. Preparations for ejecting a second wave of shaft are complete. It will be coated with the same substance used to create the walls of the underground maze. Uh... Remind me, which one is the button for that again? These complicated contraptions really aren't my thing. I'm counting on you, Kengo. Please, let Arthur be safe. No! There is a tear in the great darkness. How can this be? What has happened to Mahakala? Are they being attacked? But that shouldn't be possible if they and Shiva share the same form. Ah, uh -huh, I see you there. Now, I feel like crawling through the gap. Or do I have to drag you out? No! Stop! Ah, uh, thank you for that. Being frozen in eternal darkness is really very stifling. Tsukuyomi! Oh, not that it wasn't um, wasn't pleasant. I'm sure you made it as comfortable for me as you could, Daikaku, given our history together. Or should I call you Okuninushi? <laughs> Did you just say Okuninushi? Let's just say that there's more than one side to the headmaster of the Kyo Police Academy. Okuninushi is a being who like links two worlds. Taka Magahara and the land of Oa. He relinquished the kingdom he once ruled to my sister, Amaterasu, and was subsequently exiled to the underworld. Which was meant to be my younger brother's domain, point of fact. Hmm. I think it's likely that Okuninushi is the identity of the shadow in which the transient Daikaku enveloped himself. Or perhaps that enveloped him. Well, Okuninushi. I believe you acquired three types of sacred artifact in the underworld, all of which allow you to breathe life into sh shadows. Furthermore, I am certain that the exception Mahakala possesses a rule and rule with identical powers to those artifacts. Yet, having been sealed away as an exception, Mahakala ought not to have been able to exist in Tokyo. Which is why I have been acting in their stead as a sort of agent. And I would bet precisely some that you have attempted to overtake Mahakal's role and rule at some point. You really deserve a round of applause. You have exploited the absolute poles to perfection. Well, at least it would have been perfect, if your true identity had not been discovered. You! The existence of the same role and rule within the Soki is not permitted, and without your rule, those shadows of yours cannot exist. Too bad, so sad, Okuninushi.
<laughs> Great! Now that the appetizers have finally stopped coming. I get to have my go at the main dish. Good thing I always got a good appetite. Leave him to us. He's got to get the Shiva partner. Right. The old fort. I'm counting on you, Kengo. As you draw closer, you realize that the battle between Shiva and Kasuka is nearing its climax. Ah! 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 Kusuka charges towards his opponents in a fiery blur. It is as if his entire body is a miniature solar flare. No one could withstand contact with an attack like that. Kasuga is giving off enough heat to instantly evaporate anything. Assuming contact happens, that is. Whoa. Did anyone order extra Shivas? Are those things after midges? No, wait. Those are real. Before you stand three Shivas, and all of them are real, they are manifestations of Shiva's past, present, and future, reproduced from the cycle of reincarnation. Unless all three are defeated at once, Shiva's existence will be endlessly preserved, like the cycle itself. It is an invincible and mystical ability, available to Shiva Mahakala for inspiring the faith of Shankarla. That's the same thing Snow can do. Three copies will move as one, in this inescapable trans-dimensional attack. You can do nothing but watch on Perilous to intervene as Shiva's triple strike owns in on Kazuga. <clears throat> ah, but I'm meant to be the protagonist. <clears throat> My plot armor broken. <laughs> as Kazuga crumples to the ground, Shiva turns and fixes you with a piercing glare. Varuna Kama Deva reincarnate. Arathen. Throughout the long history of this world and its recurring wars, I have continued to fight. While you, like Varuna Kamadeva before you, have met a gruesome end time and time again. And now, as has happened countless times before, you, you shall taste the feet of my hands. That is the curse of the cycle of reincarnation. It is a hellish loop in which the same end is revisited over and over again. This time will be different. Oh, you think you can defy the cycle? It's all thanks to Kasuga. Now that I know how the attack goes, I'll be able to dodge it. An interesting sentiment, if you truly believe that. Then come, and let us settle this once and for all. Destroy the endless cycle if you can. Shiva readily accepts your words, and in a moment you see triple as Shiva's three incarnations appear before you again. I have one last question for you, Ayrton. As you face each other on the battlefield like two lone pillars, Shiva whispers these words and looks at you inquisitively. I'll answer if I can. There was one loop in this Tokyo in which you and I spent some time together. By some strange stroke of fate, we ended up in the same schoolhouse, training and living alongside one another. However, in the end, Tokyo became a battlefield, as it always does, and it came down to you and me. Before I knew it, you willingly moved into the firing line of my attack, without the slightest resistance. You passed on, allowing me to survive. Even now, I cannot fathom it. Why did you not fight back? It is the same ending that occurred between Shiva and Varuna Kamadeva in their homeworld of Devaloka, in which Varuna Kamadeva was disintegrated by Shiva's third eye when it opened. Why? Why did you leave me behind? Why did you leave me to suffer an endless cycle alone? Seemingly on the verge of tears, the words tumble from Shiva's mouth like a pain cry. Yet his words are not only colored by anger, you can hear the full spectrum of all the emotions Shiva feels towards you, bleeding through in his voice. I don't remember, you know that. Mm. 
The rule he forced upon me was out of passion. In other words, a combination of love and desire. The person towards whom Shiva's newfound passion was to be directed was the woman from Devaloka, who would be his queen. Rules based on the faith of a world are absolute within the confines of that world. From the moment that Shiva was struck with the arrow of desire, it was fate that this woman should be the object of his attention. However, having been severed from the world of Devaloka, Varunakama Deva lay outside of his control. And so, as Shiva watched the exile turn from the world, an unexpected emotion welled up inside him. An emotion Shiva ought not to have felt towards the exile at all, yet something in the latter's proud countenance had stirred him irrevocably to life. Shiva yearned for Varuna Kamadeva with an insuppressible, undeniable, carnal desire. And this was not something Shiva knew that could be blamed on his new rule. I was afraid of myself, of how badly I wanted you, and of the fact that the world's cruel order had nothing to do with it. So... Without really mean to, I attack you. It was akin to how a chick imprints upon the first loving being it sees after hatch. Perhaps Shiva might have been able to accept those feelings if it only had been love that colored them, however. Shiva. I have destroyed you now in two worlds. Once in my homeland and again here in this Tokyo. It was then that I realized I cannot escape the cycle of death and rebirth. After all, if I could have then... What I that time or any other time before? If I could have defied our fate, I would have. Ever since I came to the Tokyo, I've been looking for a chance to do things over. A chance to free myself of my regrets. And yet, I only ended up repeating my mistakes. It was then that I swore you would fall to my hands, alone. The desire to become the strongest of all grew greater within me. I could not afford to let any of the world representatives rob me of the honor of your death. Shiva's pain-laden voice flies across the desolate battlefield towards you like a poisoned arrow. That is why I will not retreat. I will face you now with all my strength, for that is all I am able to do. It is all I have left. If you think you can mess me, then by all means try. We will put an end to the cycle one way or another, Arthen. Ever since that day you left me behind, not once have I been able to turn again my fate. Do you understand what that's like? Do you know what it feels like to be abandoned to an endless cycle of suffering? I do. Better than you think, Shiva. But... Of course you don't understand. How could you, of all people, claim to understand my pain? I'm going to save you. Enough talk! It is time for action. Prepare to face the sum of my might. This battle is only going to end one way. With your death! Ah! Come on out, little Salman. It's time for Double Dragon. Here I am, Master. You can count on me. This is the technique that made you powerful enough to take on a world representative by changing your inner body into an exception territory. Ah, it's me! Hit me! Now I heard, because I was told, because of course I was told, that one of these bosses, I'm not sure which, can only be defeated by, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Actually being hit twice first. Let's just, uh, put that theory into test. Uh, who's directly behind? I already forgot my sub slots. Well, first off, uh... 
Let's just aggro him. Hopefully aggro works the same way it should. Okay, so taunting him doesn't work that way. He can't be kited properly. If that's the case, then... Yeah, I'm gonna need to attack him from the back like this. Yeah, that seems to be the way. Oh shit. <laughs> um... Oh, I'm screwed. Yo, shit. No! Don't kill me, 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 don't kill me. Okay, we live in. Um. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to waste her doing this. Or do I? Yeah, that's not good. Okay, you can just walk back. It's fine. <laughs> it's probably better if he was uh, killed that way. Um, I am now going to need to attack you like this. Yeah, that should work. <laughs> now, if only I wouldn't be spoiled in the help channel. But unfortunately, even though there is restrictions in this Discord server for spoilers in the main channel, there isn't one in the help channel. <laughs> God damn it. But yeah, hitting them three times makes sense for what they just said. They have to defeat all three of his uh, incarnations, past, present, and future. Earthen. Snow's eyes are glued to the monitors in the impromptu command room, but shows the status of the battle raging above. Though he is watching you fight, he is deep in thought. Considering, among other things, the fact that you contain the memories of 23 different people from just as many different worlds. I have heard that someone once banished from my homeworld of Shangri-La. A powerful being with several pairs of arms. According to Shangri-La's faith, the only reason for these extra limbs was to allow the being to aid not only the pitiful and weak, but also the strong and hostile. This was the mark of neither a strong ruler nor a commander of war, and yet... If the memories of that exile reside within you as well, Arthur, if you possess within you the same capacity to save not only your allies, but your powerful enemies too. Yes, if you can borrow that rule for your own purposes, then I believe you could face even Shiva on equal footing. Uh... Before you know it, you're facing three Shivas at once. More arms than you can can fly towards you with earth-shattering punches. Huh? Yeah. Shiva is now assured of his victory because both of your swords are busy, leaving you open to the third and final attack. <clears throat> and you would end the same way. Damn it, I wish I had another hand. Come on, memories, help me out here! So someone, anyone, lend me your strength! What? Impossible! Shiva's third attack never reaches you. Before it can land, a third arm appears out of thin air and blocks it. Now's my chance! He's let this work. I've just gotta get what in one good hit. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Shiva reels back as a blade of light pierces him, yet the wound is not a physical one. It appears to penetrate the, his soul rather than his body. What is this? <laughs> Don't ask me. What the heck? This isn't what I... Uh... In Devaloka, the following beliefs are held about the one called Shiva. When he is struck by Ruin and Deva's arrow and, and his third eye opens, or closes, I didn't read that. Opens. Shiva releases a burning light that reduces all existence, all creation, to its original state of chaos. What's going on? Is this outer space? Hey, partner! You okay? Don't know where we are, but I don't think we're in Ikebuku anymore. I don't think we are, Dorothy. This is how the universe looked in its early stages, before sky and earth were rent apart. It is a world without light. All things are gathered in a single location, as they were before the Big Bang, and in the middle of it all, it resides. The Great Darkness, a veritable black hole that exists to consume all light. There lies a demonic exception whose rule has been pushed beyond the boundaries of control. Mahakala. Well, here we are. The beginning of the end. The final stage of Operation Mahakala is now in motion. This will be the ultimate destruction! Ah. <sighs> What you are about to witness is nothing less than the culmination of humanity's progress. Of everything my plan B has been pushing for. Tosvidanya, one and all. Spoko yonnyoi, nochi, and sweet dreams. Uh, is that like Dutch or something? Ending the cycle one. Large map, uh, three infernal enemies. I have a feeling I know who it is, but ending the cycle one. 